Colour in Your Life is proudly sponsored by Hobbycraft stores across the UK. For more information, go to hobbycraft.co.uk. G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay folks, how are you? Well, welcome to the mountains of Snowdonia in Wales. Fantastic to be here, colouring your life, crossing the oceans and coming to the UK with the help of some fantastic people over here. But I specifically do have to thank Hobbycraft, the organisation that basically has art and craft shops right across the United Kingdom. They have stepped up to the plate uh, through Ian Walton and Leon Bowen and have put together a series of fantastic artists for us to come over and start the series in the United Kingdom. We really appreciate what they've done and it's enabled us to be able to start the series in the UK. And as you can see, some fantastic places. Uh, we're visiting some amazing artists and it's because of this company that we've been able to do this. So Hobbycraft, thank you, A1, and we really, really appreciate it. I went into one of the stores of the 89 that are located across the UK and met up with the management of the Chester store. Hobbycraft have a huge variety of products, well over 25,000. And not only do they sell some of the best brands, they also conduct workshops and art competitions across all of their stores. The range of art supplies is extensive, from oils to acrylics, watercolours, pencils, easels, and a huge range of ready-made canvases as well. Whether you are a novice or a professional artist, Hobbycraft is there to advise and assist, not just the individual artist, but art groups of all kinds right across the UK. Their mission is to inspire and encourage the passion and pleasure that the creative mind can be. Drop in and say hi and catch up with the team at hobbycraft.co.uk. Well, hi folks, and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we're in the UK, and it's a pretty special day today because we have the youngest person we've ever actually had on Colour in Your Life, uh, Emily Speakman, who is at the age of 18 years of age. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Since she's been the age of 12, she's been painting and actually winning awards in a number of different categories in various competitions and also uh, having her work appear in the Tate Gallery in Liverpool, is that correct? Yep. When did you find out that you loved art? When did you want to do that? Uh, at the age of 12. Okay. When I, uh, my mum first bought me an oil painting kit. Mm -hmm. It was really expensive. She had, did not have the money for it, but she bought it anyway. Good on so. so you've just had a love, so the seascapes, the landscapes, and then you're also going to be doing a picture for us today based on some of your space series as well. Yeah. So you've obviously got a love for art and science. Yeah, so I you've... took science in school, so. Oh, did you? Good on you. So, well, we're going to we're going to get straight into this today, and I'm going to ask uh, Emily a series of questions as we go along. But she's a very interesting character for such a young age. Got a great personality as well, and uh, we'll see what she creates. It's very interesting what she does. Uh, I'm going to step out a shot, and we'll let her get started on this. So let's come on for the ride. Okay, so what type of paints are you initially going to put down on this? For the base, I'm going to be putting on a black gesso for the background. Yeah. And then today I'm working in acrylics, just for the speed of it, even though I do usually work in oils. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a hobbycraft acrylic that you use as well? Yeah, yeah. yes it is. For my warm colours, I yeah. use hobbycraft acrylics. So this is a space scene that we're doing today, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay, pretty cool. It's the NGC 602 uh, star cluster. Okay. It's about 5,000 years old. And you just use a large brush to put it on with? Yeah, I do. I mix a little bit of water with it. Yeah. Just so you're not using all of it every time. You've won a few prizes and got some pretty cool accolades for a, such a young woman. You got the uh, best junior in seascapes and landscapes for the artist of the year in 2013. So that's, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Uh, I, that was the big seascape, yeah. the, which I did when I was 14. Okay. 
Um, I'm painting it black, so when I add the light back into it, yeah. it'll be a lot more striking. Okay. And it just saves the paint instead of having to paint or you're using all the expensive paints. Yeah. You don't really have to wait for this to dry before we do the texture either. It's almost better if it's wet so you can blend in the sides you don't want to be yeah. raised above the canvas. Okay. So starting at such a young age, how did this all come about? Ever since I was younger in primary school, I was always getting put forward for the art competitions and being told and asked to show people what I was doing so they could try and do it themselves. Yeah. And that was all in school. I never really painted outside of school until the age of 12 where my mum did buy me a, uh, my first ever art set and an easel. Well, that's a good mum, isn't it? Yeah. It's always nice to know that your parents will encourage you. It's, I think that's great. My, my first painting was actually during a household argument. So I went upstairs and I was just, uh, got all my paints out for the first time. Yeah. So I just went upstairs to my room and painted simple mountains I'd been thinking of for a while. Yeah. I came down with it and everyone was silent. I was like, they were shocked at what you did. Yeah. yeah. Every, all my brothers are really happy taking pictures of it. So really positive and attention from what I did and it just spurred me on to do more really. Yeah. So do you generally have to wait till that to dry? No, no. Uh, you'd wait for it to dry before you put your acrylics on, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But what we're going to do today is put in a thick layer of the gesso yeah. where we see the shapes of the stars just so they bring out forward to you. A little bit more three dimensional. Yeah, more three dimensional. So how are we going to do that? I've got a round circular filbert brush yeah. and then you just get a big um, amount of it. And what you do is you roll the brush okay. as it goes and it gives you that one edge of texture Yeah. and then the other edge should be flat to the canvas. So. How did you get? How did you get to work that technique out? Did you just come up with that? Yeah, well, I was just um, first painting I did it on was actually another space painting, yeah. and it just turned out really nicely. But I only did it because I was working on it, working on it, working on it. And nothing was helping me make it really stand out. I was just in my room one day, and I was really angry. Put all the gesso on, and I just started shaping it to the way I thought I'd want it, and it just turned out very nice. I thought, oh, I'll wait for that to dry. Took, took a while. Sounds like your art career is part of anger management as well. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a big, very big stress reliever. It's a better way to do it, I've got to tell you. So we're just working the way. As you roll it, yeah. all the paint disperses on one side of your brush. Okay. And depending on the, dire the direction you roll it. And this is really just to give you a three-dimensional form underneath. Yeah, it will, it will dry slightly smaller to what you're doing. It's just because the water yeah. that's in the acrylics but when you're finished with it, it should dry and give you nice texture to work over. Okay. If you roll it towards you, the paint should uh, come off the brush to the side that's closer to you. And in your young, illustrious career, you've also done a, a number of commissions as well. Yeah, which I is, have. Which is, which is really cool. And one of them was uh, a Sea King, that was on a rotor blade, the back rotor yes. blade of a Sea King, and it was for a retired pilot from Anglesey. And you had another one as well for search and rescue. Uh, it was from uh, the Menai Strait, which was uh, another one you did too. And then there was another one that you've done for, you actually donated it to the search and rescue in 2013 yeah. for the um, Brennan, Brennan Moore. Brennan Moore. Moore um, which uh, looks what's quite, quite spectacular as well. I raised £800. Uh, for the John Egg Trust. Well, that's fantastic. With that isn't painting. It? Very well yeah. done. Very, very well done. And that was actually done on a, on a rotor blade. On a rotor blade yeah. of the back of a helicopter, which is very difficult to paint because uh, the texture of it's almost like glass. Yes. If anyone's painted on something really, very smooth, they'll know it's very difficult to control the paint the way you'd like it to go. Yeah. So that took about a few weeks to finish, but it was worth it in the end. Uh, this is almost ready now, so all we're going to do is let this dry. We'll be back in a bit. So, is that is that acrylics or oils? This is acrylics. That's acrylics, okay. This is Prussian blue. Yeah. It's mainly the only blue I ever use, really, unless I'm mixing my own. Yeah. with other colours. 
you need a lot, for, not a, a lot of Prussian blue for this one, and a lot of red because you're making a lot of violets in the middle. Looks like that palette's been well used. Yeah, <laughs> this say, is um, say the least. Been cleaned recently. Yeah. The other one I had, I, when I took it off the plastic, there's just a sheet of oil paints. Okay. So this is just uh, acrylics at the minute. They dry quite plasticky. This is just some titanium white. I always use this one. Okay. Uh, almost every time when I'm painting. I'm going to put a little bit of black as well. I don't normally use black in any other painting other, other than space because black's not usually in nature. Yeah. And so do you just use water? You don't use any of the mediums No, at all? I just put water down before okay. I put any of the darker colours in, just yeah. so when I add my lighter colour over it, it's going to blend okay. and really soft it softly. Just in the sense of in between where the textures are. Obviously acrylics dry very quickly yeah. and if you're trying to blend it to make it softer, uh, you've got to do it quite fast, yeah. otherwise you're going to end up with some harsh lines if you don't want them there. So the water just helps everything stay a bit uh, more liquidy for a while. I'm going to add darker uh, Prussian blue up here and then uh, my cadmium red and crimson mm -hmm. on this end. So when I add the white it's going to mix together. Yeah. So it'll end up being like a violet in the centre when you uh, mix them all together. But this will be more of an orangey glow. So this is where the light's coming from behind this peak. Yeah. So. So how did you, when did you get your inspiration for that? Is it, uh... I just love uh, stars, galaxies, everything. I, was, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy and I was looking around a lot. And I, I really enjoyed that film. So. so we got the Prussian blue there. Yeah, that's just at the top. You can see you're using some pretty big brushes as well. Yeah, uh, it's a round brush just to stop any harsh lines coming up from the edges of the of the brush. Mm -hmm. Just bringing it around. So how did we get to go from pictures like stormy seas to get to space scenes? Yeah, because you've been painting the landscapes and the and the seascapes. So I think they have their similarities when it comes to like wildness and yeah. uncontrollable. I think. Yeah. You don't really know. Not really right or wrong. Yes, art is. It's not up, it's not down, it's not right or wrong, it just is. So at the age of 18, what are some of the drawbacks about being an 18 year old artist or are there any? All, well, all the drawbacks I found were being younger than 18. Yeah. Uh, painting when you're 13, 14, no one really takes you seriously. Yeah. And if you want to be any part of some, any clubs, anything where you want to really uh, paint accurately into the pictures and what you, professionally, no one's got many, much time for you. Mm -hmm. The only person I knew who took me on as a young person was Ian mm -hmm. in his art class, where we um, would just paint whatever we want, really. Free to do what we want there with some guidance. So you were mentioning Ian, Ian Walton, who yes. has been a great influence on you and obviously a man that's going to take over colour in your life in the UK when we leave. Yeah, I've um, known him for many years. He's. Uh, I've used to meet up every week uh, to do art together yeah. with a few others as well. We created our own uh, gallery, like cooperative, it's called ACO. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we exhibited um, a few places there all together. That was a big help in launching what, my artwork. I'm going to add some white now. Okay. Uh, on top of the colour I've just put down before it dries. That's a good idea. I'm going to bring the light down behind this. And you can still see that, you're, that moisture is still helping it to yeah, just really softly. Yeah. I think oils are a lot more forgiving when it comes to blending. So. Yes, acrylics are not easier on that behalf. Every now and then I'm just going to clean the brush off. Always looking very aurora already. <laughs> it's quite striking, it's really effective. Especially if you like quick results with your art. And if, you, and if you're impatient. Mm -hmm. so. I can't imagine an 18 year old being impatient. <laughs> I mean, it would look a lot more blended if you were to put it on with a bigger brush, but if you wanted it to look a, lot, a bit more uh, textured, yeah. I'd go in with a smaller one. Just make it more difficult for yourself. So what are some of the other artists that have influenced you? Uh, William Turner, yeah. I'd say. Joseph Farkson, because of his use of light and sun and shadows. Turner's skies are my favourite. Yes. Just amazing. Have you been down to the... I have, I have, yeah. When I was down there uh, exhibiting for a competition yes. there, which I uh, was featured in a book for on the calendar. So at a very young age you've become pretty well known, which is, uh, which is a great credit to you. 
obviously as it starts to dry, it becomes a bit easier to blend. Yes. Because it's not as liquidy. So you sort of really just, just really roll lightly. the paintbrush out the top. Yeah, just very yeah. lightly. Just to get the last few strokes out that I don't want. Uh -huh. Some are intentional, some aren't, which I'm just getting rid of now. The light's just coming around that small point there. I'm going to grab some more water. Some more of the colour I already made. Bring it down. And the lighter you are with the brush strokes, the more it catches on that texture you've made. Mm -hmm. So it stands out. I can see. There's another area of light here. These two are almost the same brightness, so I would end up probably doing those last. Just to make sure they stay clean. No mistakes coming over them or anything when the light paint's been put. So are you uh, teaching any other younger children? I had work experience uh, in a primary school, mm -hmm. which is where I did uh, some teaching classes there. Just as a, well they found out I wasn't even there to paint really. They found out I painted and thought it'd be a great idea to show the kids, which they all loved it. We were painting hot air balloons all day. Each time, it's only a small school, so everyone got a nice turn at it. I really enjoyed that. Something I might look at doing in the, in the future. So I also noticed in your portfolio that you've um, done some portrait as well, or portraits. And yes. It's uh, one one of called Max. That's not your boyfriend, is it? No, no, no. That's my, one of my very close friends. Just a friend in my A levels, I took art. Yeah. And that's where I did had to do portraits. I thought I'd challenge myself, get away from the landscapes, seascapes. I had never really done portraits before. So I thought it would be a good idea to try. Sure. And I think it went okay. So what's, uh, what medium did you do that in? Well, that one, that one, that particular photo is almost everything I had in the classroom. Pencil, pen, watercolour, acrylic and even oil. Okay. And then pastel on top. So for a young lady as yourself, you're actually in a couple of galleries yes. these days. So what galleries are you actually in? At the moment, there is one from the Imago Mundi exhibition, which is in Italy. And uh, I think it was 2016 that you were commissioned by Luciano Benetton from the Benetton Group to be part of an exhibition called the Imagio Mundi. And you had a painting going to that as well in Italy, correct? Correct. Correct, it's, Mundo. It's a very small painting, about 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres, something yeah. like that. Really small. But it was part of the Welsh collection, is that right? Yes, part of the okay. Welsh artist collection. That sounds pretty cool. And then there was another one you were in uh, called Space. Funnily enough, we're doing that yes. right now. That's probably where this was influenced. And that was at the uh, Tate Liverpool. It was everyone's idea of space. So there's a lot of uh, different things there. Uh, I'm just adding my background pinks and reds before I add on any oranges just to warm them up. Okay. Before I add them on. Because in, in my experience, if I add the oranges on, whilst it's still dark, it looks very cold and it doesn't look very warm at all. Okay. It doesn't come out very nice. I'm still using the same big brush. Uh, I don't go into, into any detail until I'm really putting the highlights in. I like doing paintings like these because I know I'm never going to see them in person. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice to have it here in front of you. Uh, I'm going to start on the stars now. But I have to stand up because it makes it much easier. Okay. All you need is a flat edged brush and a round smaller brush, just so you can get the edges of the reflection. I'm going to do a more of a golden star to this begin with. So I'd add the orange, but I'm going to add some cadmium yellow to it. I'll do a small circle, marking where I want it. Make sure there's not much water on the brush, because you need this to be much thicker than the other paint you've been doing, just so it brings it forward. It's a nice dry technique. Yeah. Originally it won't seem so opaque, just so the colour will just be on the background. When you add your white over, it'll start to glow. Fading out. Doesn't matter if it's completely blended up because it's dark behind it, you won't see it very well unless you've added the white. Switching over to flat edge brush. And initially make a cross. So if you flatten it this way. The bristles all flatten out into uh, like a sharp edge. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to your round, smaller brush, just dabbing in the white in the centre. Make sure there's no water in your brush before you go. And then going in on the edges, bringing it up that, that line we've made. That's how I do the normal stars, but if you wanted it to look a bit more unreal and golden, take a little bit more orange on the same brush you've just used, tapping it. Bring it through. 
on that edge where you've just used. I'm trying to keep it in a relatively triangular shape, but also blended. Just so it draws your eye up the light. Going back in with some white for the centre. Just dabbing it and blending it out. I'm going to start on the blue stars now, the main cluster of stars. Uh, doing the same technique really, but blue instead of orange. But if you don't do it right, the blue will turn out too dark and it's going to look uh, really out of place. So again with the white and the flat edge brush, just so you can create the lines of light that are horizontal and vertical. Bringing it up and down, just following the light you've made. This is really just the background glow before you put in the real white. Okay, so you're going to show us another technique. What's this one? This one's just pretty much the lazy way of baking stars, and mm -hmm. it's just splatting with your finger and a brush. Yep. You need quite a lot of water, so it's really runny, so there's enough to uh, come off your brush. Put the thing down. Not too much, you don't, be very careful to, you could overdo it. So just holding the brush here, lightly. Pulling back on the bristles. Yep, oh, I see what you mean. You see them coming up? Yeah, that's good. If you twist the brush in your hand as you go, you can kind of direct where the spot's going to go. Mm -hmm. Jot down a thousand stars, you can do it in five minutes. Yeah, it's pretty uncontrollable. Unless you really have a hold on the brush. Yeah. But it looks like it's more control as it gets a bit drier as well. Yeah. If you pull the brush back without bending it, it should spring back and hit there. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it looks like you've got a few more stars that you want to do. So we might let you do some work and we'll come back in a little while once you've done some more. Thank you. Okay. Well, that really looks like a scene from outer space, my dear. It's uh, quite amazing and you've made some, you know, more stars. It's wonderful. Very, very well done. Okay, guys. Well, a fantastic space scene uh, and it was wonderful. Emily? Yep. Thanks for being on the show. It was really great to have you, honey. Uh, our youngest person ever to be on Colour in Your Life and she's an amazingly talented young woman and I think we'll go a long way and has a very, very good future in the world of art, without a doubt. And congratulations on all the things that you've done thus far anyway. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Now, if somebody wants to come and have a look at your work, what's your website details? It's emmaspeakmanart.co.uk And as always, you can come to Colour in Your Life, uh, .au, and see what we're doing, and then come and see us Facebook and YouTube. But uh, we've got some more people who've got to film in this great country. Uh, it's been a fantastic trip so far and we've really enjoyed it. But as we always say, until we see you again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life, UK. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Bye now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>